The live streaming space has gotten more complex over the past few years with IRL backpacks, sub alerts, subathons, role playing, but so have the platforms that actually host the content as well. And YouTube, despite being the biggest video platform in the world, is still catching up with some of its rivals in the live streaming space. But it does have some really unique features that set it aside from the rest in the pack. So let's take a look at that in this edition of the studio. All right, so let's talk about what everyone cares about the most when it comes to a streaming platform, which is monetization. So in order to monetize your live streams on YouTube, at least through the platform directly, you need to be a part of the YouTube Partner Program. So to join this, you need to apply and you need to have at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours over the past 12 months. And once you have access to this, you can basically insert pre-roll ads and mid-roll ads into your live streams. You can also gain access to the membership program. So memberships are like subscriptions where people can pay for certain access and they're gonna pay monthly recurring payments. So this could be like special badges or icons in chat or access to membership only live streams or maybe membership only videos or membership only community messages. You just wanna be careful with what you give your memberships. Make sure you don't do anything like raffles or giveaways or games of chance. Anything that would get yourself removed from the partner program. And finally, there's super chats and super stickers. So when someone basically pays for a super chat or a super sticker, they have their message popped up at the top of the chat field for a period of time. It depends on how much money they sent in. And same for a sticker, they have an animated sticker that pops up and it will only stay up for as long as they've donated money. So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually monetize on YouTube. And for things like super chat and super stickers, Expert Broadcaster actually has this built in to display these sources if you like. So one of the best aspects of YouTube is the amount of flexibility it has with live streams. So just go to create on YouTube and create a live stream. And you see this main page here, basically you can create your recurring stream here. So if you're gonna always just be streaming day to day, maybe you just change the description, change the thumbnail so that when it appears on people's homepage, they'll click on it. You can do all that here, but you can also schedule streams. So if you manage your streams, you can create a scheduled stream. So you can say, you know, if you're an event organizer, you can create something for next month or whenever your client's event is. And on people's timelines, it'll appear and they can set reminders for this. So it's really handy, really useful. Also, you can change the privacy of streams. So you can have an unlisted stream. Maybe you want to embed it on a website. Or maybe you want to do a private stream where you just invite people based on their emails. Really handy if you're doing a private event for someone and they don't want to play for their own streaming platform. All right, now let's take a look at some of the more customization features. So the most important one that you're gonna to wanna to set is the latency. So the latency, basically, the more latency there is, the higher quality you can go on your stream. So you can do 1440p, 4K streams, and the lower latency, this is better for viewer interaction, but then you're gonna lose access to some of the other features that we'll cover in a moment. Now, another thing is auto start and auto stop. So if you're setting up an event and you're setting up a live stream, if for some reason you go offline, as long as the event is not ended, you can go back and restart that stream again. So it's really good if you might be doing IRL streaming or somewhere where your connection can drop. But if you set up auto start and auto stop, instead of having to go into the dashboard and starting and stopping the event, basically when the feed goes offline, the event ends. So you might need this if you're in certain situations, but I kind of recommend keeping it off and having the flexibility in the dashboard and starting and stopping your stream. You can also add captions. Some accounts actually have access to automated captions, but you can only use this with normal latency. And then there's DVR. DVR is really great, but basically the last four hours of any stream, you can skip in between. So if you jumped in somewhere and you weren't sure what happened, you can jump backwards and forwards into it. And so another feature is 360 streaming. So if you have a camera that supports 360 streams or even an XSplit, you can enable this. You can send this to YouTube. And finally, you can actually add additional delay to your stream if you like. So if you're streaming a competition or something, you don't want people to see what's going on in your game or your hand, you know, enable this additional delay. But I recommend actually using the streaming software to add delay. So setting up Expert Broadcaster for YouTube is really easy. You can actually just copy the stream key and the RTMP URL and use custom RTMP. But what's better is you actually want to log into your YouTube account and XSplit. And when you log into your YouTube account, it'll automatically configure your streaming settings based on your resolution and your frame rate. And then when you go live, you can either go live to your persistent, you know, live streaming URL if you're streaming every day, or you can select your specific event, or you can even create a new event within XSplit. It's really easy, really streamlined and quick to use. 
So it's really important to know your community moderation tools within YouTube. So when you're in the live control room, click on edit, go to customization. And here you can actually uncheck some boxes. So you can enable live chat or you can disable live chat in the archive. You can set it to slow mode. You can set it to subscribers only mode. Uh, this is really good for managing your chat. And then there's actually an option here to go into the community settings. So in the community settings, you can add your moderators so they can help you police the chat. You can blacklist words. You can set privileges for certain users. It's really handy to know how to control your chat and limit any disturbances. So YouTube's live streaming tools are really robust. In fact, if you're an event organizer, I think YouTube is your platform of choice because of all the scheduling and security tools that you can implement and the DVR function is really great and you already have an automatic archive and YouTube's going to pretty much work anywhere. It's not as easy as just going live on Twitch, but Twitch does have some really great monetization options like it has Twitch Prime, which will definitely get people to send you money right away. But YouTube, you're always going to want to have a YouTube account if you're a brand and YouTube's algorithm is really great for finding people to discover content. So maybe you want to centralize your long form videos and your live streams in one place, but you know, always use all your social media as much as possible. But I want to know from you, have you ever live streamed to YouTube? Have you thought about changing platforms? Have you been multi-streaming? Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Give a like and share this video if it was helpful and be sure to subscribe for the next time we're in the studio.